So this is part number two for my Kaggle data science project uh, that deals with the Titanic and the classification of passengers, whether they survived or not. Now in the first video, I did a live coding walkthrough essentially on how I built out the first iteration of the model. And I told myself that I'm going to work on improving the results for a part number two. And going into part number two, I originally set my expectations to try to get a 0.8 or like you'd say 80% uh, correctness uh, with predicting passengers, whether they survived or not. I ended up getting 0.79. So I'm a little bit off, uh, but there's a trade-off, right? Like I could continue to tweak my models that I ended up building out and that could take a few more weeks or I could publish this right now and focus on improving more skills or even learning a lot more. And I decided that I'm gonna publish part two and then move on to regressions within Scikit-Learn. I already started a brand new project with the housing pricing and I'm learning a lot about regression. So you'll see a lot more of those videos on the YouTube channel. Again, I upload two to three times every single week. So if you wanna help support the channel, make sure to subscribe and check out some of those videos. I'm teaching you guys everything I learn as I move from a data analyst to a data scientist. With that in mind though, I'm gonna take you through my code that I've updated. It's not gonna be a live code like the first one, but I'll call out everything that I did end up changing with it. And also go over a few new models that I added in here, especially with like the boosting and the voting classifiers that I wasn't really familiar with when I first started the Titanic project until I started doing even more research. And I do have videos essentially on everything that I did cover within the Titanic project here on the YouTube channel. You can take a look at it under the scikit-learn or machine learning playlist. All right, let me go on Kaggle right now and let's call out some of the different changes that were made. All right, so first to show you guys my score right here, it has this rank 1,296, essentially 0 0.79, uh, but there's a lot of people at the same exact score, right? 0 078947, essentially goes all the way up over here to 1,097, about 1,100. Um, the one thing that's interesting though about these results, and I can't say for sure, but I'm pretty sure it's kind of impossible to predict everything correctly. And we had 320 people uh, that predicted, I mean, 100% accuracy, which I, I think that's wrong. But at the same time, right, I, I'm kind of happy with those results. And I also want to show you a little bit behind the scenes of what I was doing for the tweaking. Now, I wish I documented this for everything. Some of this I wrote on a piece of paper and that's been tossed out. Um, but I started making a sheet over here. And essentially, I have 12 different models that I created over here and I'd test them daily. Um, so uh, we have sub numbers, which I'll show you how that was built out over here in a second. Uh, but then I also put the scores for test one, two, three, four, five. And then my last one, which was test six, which was earlier today. And then I started making notes over here, like uh, my simplified Q cuts, right? Dropping some columns over here, tuning uh, the voting classifier, tuning everything else, which this actually failed surprisingly when I tuned these three models, I got significantly worse. And again, we'll talk about that. And then lastly, test six, which I went back to this voting classifier, tuned it one more time uh, with one, two, three. And I got this really high score for both voting classifier one and also two. I also had a few other models that I tested and I deleted them. So like I had up to four or five voting classifiers uh, with different combinations, but a lot of them were performing pretty poorly. So I cut them out and I didn't keep them on here. And again, like I have VC1, VC2 for voting classifiers, the different things, right? Need to try. And we'll talk about that in a second. So let's go over this code. I still have this named as Titanic, a work in progress 912, but this will be changed probably um, by the time you're watching this video. And you can see version four was successful. It takes about an hour or so to run all these different models just because there's so many parameters with hyperparameter tuning. And yeah, so. Up here still, right? Nothing really changed, except we're gonna be adding in a few other models to be testing. And I'm gonna also close this out just so it's not in the way for you guys. Nothing changed over here, right? Kept all this the same. This is just initial research into the data set. So we're already pretty familiar with what was going on. So nothing really changed. Uh, the first thing that changed, I believe, if I remember correctly, is this Q cut. I changed the age to five over here. I think originally I had eight. Um, just to simplify the data set a little bit, right? And changed all of this over here. Then going down as well, fair. 
I change this also to five, was all this will be changed to. Okay. And then one thing I was gonna look at changing, and I it honestly passed over for me was changing some of these different titles. Uh, because we have eight in total over here. But I decided to keep it like this, right? Because like doctors, 42% survive, master 57, military 40%. So like you could technically uh, combine some of these, right? Maybe military and doctor could have been combined together, right? And then we have Mrs. Married, which is 0 0.8, and then Miss over here. But like if I combine those, maybe you're looking at male versus female. So again, 50-50, Noble had a very high survival rate. Um, and like I was, again, 50-50 if I wanted to combine Master and also Noble at the same time, uh, just based off of the ranks. And you can see like Rev, uh, someone that's religious, 0%. So I could have simplified this, but I decided not to. And I didn't even test it if the simplified version performed better. But again, if I had an unlimited amount of time to work on this project, maybe that's something I would test and see how the results would go. And I'd, I'd make another tab over here for test seven, right? Say simplified over here and see how some of the different models perform. Uh, one thing that does take a lot of time, right, is you only can submit 10 results a day. I have 12 over here. So essentially what would happen is one day I'd submit 10, right, to get the results for all these 10. And then I'd have to wait the next day to submit two more. So there is a little bit of a drawback of having so many different models. And maybe I didn't need these, right? Like I had decision tree and also random forest, which my random forest, I believe, performed better. So and they're very similar in a sense. So maybe I didn't need to continue to submit my decision tree every single day. Again, something I just want to call out for you guys, because this was my first ever Kaggle project. And I want to learn from it a little bit, right? So we have that over here. Uh, name length, also, I believe I did simplify this down. Yeah, so I simplified name length down all the way to three, which maybe that wasn't the right call. But like you can see over here, 11 to 22, 25% survival rate, 22 to 28, 32, which I think that was about what was expected in general um, with people surviving, if I remember correctly. And then 28 to 82 had like a 58% survival rate. So name length definitely had some sort of impact on this model. Obviously like the longer name, the more chance of surviving. And I guess you've achieved more or were born into nobility. All right, um, again, just, I split all this up over here. We had all of this built out, continue to go by. Didn't do anything with ticket number. I don't believe originally, right? A ticket location definitely didn't do anything about just because it was kind of weird. And maybe I could have tested this out, but whatever, right? Um, ticket count, I believe is still used, right? We're just gonna skim through this a little bit over here. I still filled our NAs above. So this is new. I looked at uh, building out a correlation matrix. And then I, I thought originally I, either dropped Civ SP or Parch, but I guess I didn't. And you can see like family size is definitely impacted by these two, right? Uh, correlation 089, 078 with those over here. And then P class and then also cabin assigned, we had a negative 73, which is kind of high on that side of things. So I did take a look at a few different combinations of dropping stuff like you can see over here, I dropped Civ SP, Parch and ticket number counts. And then I ended up just dropping sub SP and parch and had a little bit more accurate results. Um, and ticket number counts is over here, right? Seven, five, five, nine, and 0 0.66. It's a little bit of high correlation, but that kind of makes sense too, right? Um, your ticket number count might be higher if you're gonna bring on family and split a room. So I understand why ticket number counts and also family size was so high, but definitely impacted my model's performance at the very end. I so kept ticket number counts over here, right? Um, so I said this was new right here, X equals, and I dropped survi survived, which makes sense, right? Because that's what uh, we're going for a Y, but sib SP and then also parch was dropped. Where my old one, I just dropped survive and we got a little bit more accurate, right? And then X test over here, what we ended up dropping too, right? Um, so all this looks pretty good so far, right? Didn't really change up anything over here except for this pass through right? Because I'm not going to keep all the same columns, essentially, right? Some of them need to be dropped. And that's what I put over here. And then we have our classifiers. And I did try some hyperparameter tuning for all of these. 
um, but didn't really get the best results from those. So we still have a random forest classifier decision tree, right? A KNN, K neighbors classifier. And I'm just going to go through these SVC, right? Logistic regression. Not much over here. Our naive base, I noticed that kept performing really well with this. So I, this was something I really tried um, improving, but like there's only VAR smoothing, so couldn't really do anything about it. And that's kind of where I got the idea of using a voting classifier um, because there's a few models that did perform a little bit better uh, with this being one of them. And you'll see it in a second, right? Um, we also added an XGBC classifier over here, which was new to me. I never used this one before. I don't have a video on it on the channel yet because it's not within scikit-learn, but I will be covering this within the future. Uh, we have auto boost, which I just did cover that in a video. So I tried a few different things with ADA boost or out of boost or adaptive boosting, right? Um, one thing with the estimator is you can actually put another model in here. So originally what I did is I put a decision tree SVC and a logistic regression. I did the hyperparameter tuning earlier. So I put the best parameters over here uh, for each of those models to see how well they performed. And then since logistic regression performed the best with this, I wanted to try a few different uh, parameters with here, right? 0 0.2, 0 0.05. Uh, but this original one with C equals 0 0.1 did perform the best overall. And you can see it a little bit down below, right? So all the different parameters that ended up working the best with the score as well. Also did a extra trees classifier. Uh, essentially, it's another version of kind of like a random forest. It's just a different way of doing it. Um, it's a little bit more randomized, but it did. It's, we do have a lot of interesting data here and it performed a little bit better than the random forest. Um, so that was kind of cool to keep that here as well. And then also had a gradient boosting classifier. If you have a video, again, on all three of these, these were brand new to me. So I wanted to learn them, make the videos and also apply them to the Titanic data set. And uh, this also performed pretty well. So essentially we had these going over here and I wanted to test out a voting classifier. So kind of took a look at this list over here. Again, this was on a piece of paper originally. I uh, tried to see some of these different test scores. And essentially I found three groupings that did really well with the voting classifier initially. Uh, so we have GBC, ETC, and then NB. So naive base, extra trees classifier, gradient boosting classifier. And then I also had a voting classifier too, right? Adaptive boosting extra trees, which again, I'd said performed very well, both in the naive base. So I did a lot of hyperparameter tuning with this one. Initial, right, weights one, one, one. I knew naive base performed better in general than these other two. So uh, one, one, two performed really good for a while until I tested one, two, three this morning. And when I did that, we ended up getting 0 0.78947 and also 0 0.78468, um, which, you know, if you look over here, that's technically one of my best scores, test three. We had these over here before we get into test number six. And I had more tests, but this was stuff I written down. Um, so I, like you said, I did try other voting classifiers out there. I tried a combination uh, between VC and one and two, where we had all four together. I tried uh, different soft voting versus hard voting, one, one, three, a lot, a lot of different combinations. Uh, but essentially our winner, right? was voting classifier number two, which is this one over here, which adaptive boosting, extra trees, and then our naive bays, voting hard, and then weights one, two, three. Again, I just put this with our pipeline over here, which this looks pretty complicated, right? And we got a pretty complex pipeline and I am still learning a little bit about pipelines. There's definitely things I maybe would have done differently within this project that I'm gonna be changing a little bit uh, within the housing pricing which again, I just recently started. But then we just put all these predictions over here, right? That predict or X test, then put it into our data frame down below. And then just we export it out. And yeah, so just to show you guys also how many things I did submit, right? My submissions over here, I submitted a ton, right? So you can see with a wide variety of scores and I just kept on testing. And that's the one thing like, can't expect this to be correct from day one. You're going to keep on tuning your models, trying to perform a little bit better. And that's essentially what happened with this project, right? We ended up getting uh, essentially 0 0.79 and I'm very happy with that end result.
So I think this is it for the Titanic project. I may do some other additional tweaks in the future, but if you do see some quick ways I could improve this project, let me know down below in the description, or you can either tweet me or email me. All those are also down below. And now we're going to be covering regressions. And our first regression video is on linear regressions. You should go check this one out right here.